Howdy folks, this is Jackers, back with another episode of our Fallout New Vegas Let's Play, this time with episode 39, I believe, and we are here in the Repcon headquarters, and we are about to take a tour with Eddie and Veronica and the Repcon tour guide, so I will turn it over to Checkers the Courier. Alright, kids, are we all ready for the tour? Keep your arms and legs inside the building at all times, at least, you know, until we leave it and all. Uh, I don't think you can really, but I think your friend will. All right, there, tour guide. Welcome back. Interested in a tour of the Repcon Museum, or did you have a question about the company I could answer? Well, I probably have plenty of questions you can't answer, like what the passwords are and how we, you know, get higher clearance. But for the moment, I'd like a tour of the museum. Excellent, excellent. Please be patient. The tour will begin in just a moment. All right then. That's good to know. Ready for the Repcon tour, Rocketeers? Courtesy of the fine folks at Robco, I'll be your guide today on the path of scientific discovery. Yay. Y'all look excited. How may I serve you, Master? We're going on a field trip and you just joined us, Veronica. This is going to be exciting. In the lead line case oh. behind me is a spent radioactive rod from one of our old reactors. No need to stand too close. Let's move along, shall we? <laughs> boring old rod or what's this a dull rod not so rocketeers this dull rod once powered repcon's old nuclear propelled rockets and still contains harmless asterisk traces of radioactive material as an exercise stare closely asterisk at the rod and try to spot the telltale glow Asterisk. While this case is lead line, standard issue in these cases, not specifically requested for this display, do not touch, look, or stand too close to the exhibit. Keep your legs moving and see the rest of the museum. Look here. Yeah. A row of multicolored plasma fumes. Wow. Careful. They may look safe to drink, but your stomach is the last place they should be. Why the difference in cylinder size? Refining our production methods has resulted in higher yields of fuel over time. That's why. Alright, let's see what this says. Activate plasma what? Hold up, Rocketeers, what's this? This trio of cylinders isn't a trio of cylinders at all. Asterisk. They're containers holding what some asterisk scientists call plasma. Can you say plasma? Repcon's always look into the future, and in our future, we don't have to worry about radiation, health risks, or lawsuits when using this new and improved fuel source to blast our rockets into and out of the sky. Asterisk clarification, cylinders and plasma are factually correct designations of display items, both by definition and by the scientific community. All right, what's up next there? Floating ball? To my right, you can see a sample of some old safety barrels Repcon once used to store radioactive waste. Perfectly safe. On my left is an example of a mountain of Repcon safety barrels some legislators claim are poisoning our environment. Ridiculous. All right, let's see what we have here. Activate radioactive waste? We've all heard stories that radiation is a dangerous, is dangerous, fact or fiction, asterisk. A common sight in factories, military installations, and the basements of selected government-funded middle schools, these safety barrels, asterisk, are just what the name implies, safe. While their attractive coloring can be interpreted as a warning for Repcon, it's an invitation to a future filled with nuclear power. Asterisk, rhetorical questions and nomenclature of exhibit items cannot be used as a basis for criminal prosecution. How may I serve you, mistress? Oh, he's moving on. Let's go. Nuclear family, why look here, a pile of itty bitty safety barrels, asterisk, all nestled together like a family sitting down to dinner. Now, while it's claimed even the safest nuclear waste disposal procedures see poison into the environment that never ever goes away, in Repcon's case, we say it all depends on where you put them, and Nevada's just the place. 
asterisk, nomenclature for hazardous waste barrels as per Repcon glossary specs. Oh, now let's catch up, guys. Behind me is our most recent rocket project, which we're keeping under our hats until launch, if you'll pardon the expression. And in front of me is a model, not actual size, of the launch dome we are using to send our rockets screaming into orbit. Well, they went, that's for sure. Rockets away. Just like the rocket you see here, we're aimed at the sky, but we've got a ceiling in the way. See Rocketeers, while Repcon is, was, focused on non-radioactive asterisk propulsion engines, we still need to sneak back and use some of our older proven techniques with nuclear-driven engines to make space travel a reality. Partnered with our new buddy Robco, we've dug up older, cheaper technology for upcoming orbital projects. No worries, even if you can't always see what we're up to up there, we can see you. Asterisk, any implication of radioactive material as negative is unintentional and in no way reflects Robco or its subsidiary Repcon. And over here we have Ready, Set, Launch. Force your parents a short drive south and you'll see the retractable dome of Repcon's launch facility, not actual size. You may have heard wild stories about rocket flights and their impact asterisk on nearby towns and communities, but Repcon feels you can't put a price of space exploration. After all, Rocketeers, you do want to go into space someday, don't you? Asterisk. Statement is figurative and inadmissible as evidence in a court of law. Well, looky here. Now these colorful fellows behind me are Repcon's earliest experiments in flight. Feel free to read the plaques and learn, Rocketeers. All right, let's do that quick before he goes away. Green Bean, officially called the Z43521P by silly engineers, we prefer to call this little scrapper by its true nickname, the Green Bean. After all, which would you prefer in your backyard garden? A smoldering Z43521P or a Green Bean? Asterisk. One sounds like it belongs if mentioned on the news, and makes, make news it did, featuring Repcon's plasma engine, it was so newsworthy that we decided to take the quantum matter modulation unit out and see if we could use it for non-explosive uses. Asterisk, rocket nickname chosen after results of first trial landing. Is this a plaque too? Not that we can read. Okay. And Big Fat Fiery Fred. V29321G may look like a big fat red rocket rocketeers, but old fatty here ran circles around the earth not so long ago. So let's see you keep up. Sure, V29321G's re-entry gave it its more commonly known nickname, Big Fat Fiery Fred, but here at Repcon we choose to focus on the successes and apply what we learned about explosive resistant shielding to future models and even our landing platforms. Asterisk. Asterisk. The newly reconstructed Repcon launch facility was a direct beneficiary of this discovery. And finally, Needle Nose. This sleek and purple R77293A needle nose is what happens when you mix fossil and plasma in a rocket and shake it up. The fossil fuels punch this sharp nosed terror through the sky, and the plasma is used to shoot it through space to planets where Repcon can mine more fossil fuels, asterisk, continuing the whole cycle again, asterisk. Interplanetary mining and resource rights still in negotiation. All right, Rocketeers, let's keep on a going. Oh well, what do we have here? Hi! Now for the highlight of our tour. Due to a generous donation from Robco, this next exhibit showcases the wondrous world of robots. Around you are the incredible iBot, the fearsome SentryBot, and the <laughs> always helpful Mr. Handy. That helpfulness runs through our whole line. 
All right, let's see here. The Eye and iBot. Robco's always had an eye for robotics, and this little fella is no different. This robotic marvel can not only recognize your face and voice with advanced facial and auditory recognition technology, it can also broadcast video and audio as well. Think of it. All the sights and sounds of your radio and TV in your living room at home blasted directly at you on the street, subway, bathroom, or wherever you may be. Never fear, you'll never miss a news bulletin or presidential address again, no matter where you are. Exhibit brought to you by your friends at Robco. Watch your step. Whoa, watch your step. You don't want to be facing this fearsome fella if you accidentally stumble into a restricted area, whether sporting the latest in dual miniguns, rockets, or laser cannons. The sentry bot not only takes its job seriously, it also takes no prisoners. It's proof of Robco's commitment to defense that these deadly guards are concealed in chambers throughout this facility. So let this be a warning. Watch where you step. Or out'll come Robco, guns blazing. Exhibit brought to you by your friends at Robco. The hand in handy. You can never have too many hands. Three, why not four? That was Robco's inspiration behind the popular and cost-effective Mr. Handy model. The first of the line shown here. Always a help around the household, whether with mom in the kitchen using its titanium circular power saw, or in the garage with dad using its armor-piercing laser array. Mr. Handy is not just helpful, he's your friend, too. Exhibit brought to you by your friends at Robco. And finally, it's got wheels! Some folks have asked, why not a Protectron with wheels? Robco wasn't afraid to answer that question. The Protectobot is the answer. While safety standards prevented this freewheeling dynamo from entering mass market production despite Robco's best intentions and teams of lawyers, we take consolation in letting you see this extremely well-funded experiment as it was intended. A robot moving so fast it'll look like it's standing still. Exhibit brought to you by your friends at Robco. This it is the is final oh, stop oh. on our tour. Oh, this well. This model of our solar system is a small example of where the partnership between Robco and Repcon hopes to go. See those little rockets zipping about? Yeah. They are manned by robots, tirelessly looking for resources to mine on planets beyond our own. And that's it for our tour today, Rocketeers. Robco and its tiny partner, Repcon, thank you. Any further questions, please feel free to ask. All right. Our rich, rich solar system. A model of our solar system, not actual size. Beautiful, isn't it? Robco, with its subsidiary Repcon, has often gazed into the night sky seeing the rich pageant of stars and planets above us. Our goal? To send unmanned rockets to these other systems, seeing their beauty firsthand while mining ever deeper into each planet's surface for precious resources needed here at home. This is our promise to mankind, extending our reach into a future where the number of Robco and Repcon rockets match the stars in the sky. This exhibit brought to you once again by your friends at Robco. Well, since the tour is done over, maybe we should take a little bit of a look around. We could go through that door, or, you know, we could kind of wander ourselves over this way. Get a little sneaky like, pop this old door open. Hey, we found a gift shop. Some lunch boxes, we'll grab those. A um, bunch of mugs and ashtrays and empty sunset sarsaparillas. Some white plates and red plates and green plates. 
and some there's a star bottle cap and another bottle cap and another bottle cap and a cash register with some pre-war money and what do we have here a door locked hard but we would need a 75 skill now do we have anything that might help us out there no today's physician's not going to help us no no well we're going to have to come back at some point i don't think anything we actually have even of the chemical nature will help us out but then again i prefer to stay away from those so let's see well maybe there's something i missed i'm sure there is something we would enjoy potentially oh look at little family of radioactive barrels eddie you keeping an eye out that's good let's see what else we got here i don't imagine we can do nothing with these here rockets And that sentry is just well let's say he's better off where he is if we pop this here door what do we get we got an intercom we've got a stairwell looks like there were some folk up here poor souls who didn't quite make it jenny millet security key card is red I don't know what that means maybe we'll have a chance to find out hello please remember visiting hours are from 10 a.m. until 5 p.m. please show your badge or make your way out of the building um I have a badge do you want to see my badge no you don't care all right then we'll just mosey on over to the I doubt this would open the door. I guess it's worth a look, though. I think it's not that kind of key. And it is not. Let's just zip right on under Eddie here. Maybe How may I serve you, Master? Oh, we're just going to check out your facilities here. See if How there's may I serve you, mistress? anything anybody left. Oh, Veronica, he's saying hi to you. Maybe you should say hi in a distracting fashion for us. Nothing. Nothing in the sinks either. Looks like they still have water pressure though. We were detected, now we're hidden. I don't know if we can if we need to do anything with Jenny's old key card here or not. Well we've got first floor access, but hit that old space-time key just be on the safe side one valid facial pattern detected yeah hi we are still recognized and recognizable are we cool to go through this door right here second floor well that's a little hard to say let's uh Mosey on over to that there. Terminal looks like it's working. Terminal very easy. Most rest hope. Oh, let's see. Loot. One to four. Well, that means it's not going to be most. Could be rest. One to four. Could be... No, it could not be hope. Could be home. Well, it's time to do the thing again. Start looking for resets. We got our resets. We may as well knock out any other duds we haven't already found. Um, let's see. We're looking for matched 
repairs online. There's one. There's one. There's one. There's one. Another one. All right, so let's see here. Oh, but the words done went off the line. It's not going to be home. I don't think it could be lost, but I could be wrong. Let's try road. There we go. And add user facial data to database. Granting us second floor access. Outstanding. Now, enter office correspondence. Good day, Miss Wang, from Carl Rook, Vice President, to Carl Rook from Sarah Wang Information Systems. Carl, I've made some progress decrypting the packets. From what I can tell, someone is sending progress messages to a secure off-site server somewhere. Were I to venture a guess, I would say that the messages are going to Poseidon, but I don't have enough proof to make a serious claim. Sarah. Second correspondence to Carl Rook from Sarah Wang. Mr. Rook, for the last couple of weeks I have seen a higher than usual rate of encrypted messages leaving the facility here. These messages use an unusual encryption protocol that I haven't seen before. I'm fairly certain that it isn't a DOD approved method. I fear that these messages may be a sign of someone sending insider information. Sarah Wang. To Sarah Wang from Carl Rook, Mrs. Wang, please continue your investigation into the messages and keep me appraised on any progress you make. In the meantime, please keep this information private. I will make sure the appropriate parties are informed. And please, call me Carl. And finally, to IT Services from Carl Rook, Vice President. Hello, I will need someone to come over as soon as possible and clear the old Vice President's data off this terminal, as well as reformat it with my personal information. Thank you, Carl Rook. Looks like I went backwards there, but, well, can't take me anywhere. Nikolai Tesla and you. Now, that's a book, not a magazine, so let's take a look there. I believe that increases our energy weapons by three permanently. There's another fission battery. Worth a lot, but weighs a lot. Wonder Glue will take it in the wrench. Desk is empty. Green lights all over the place like things still working. Did I? Oh, hi. Well, I guess we can test our facial recognition. Hello, Mrs. Millis. Hi. I hope you have an excellent day at work today. Thank you, maintenance robot. You have a great day, too. Don't you mind none that I'm over 200 years old. Well, let's just slip on in here. Um, let's see, pack of cigarettes. And uh, five bottle caps. And another pack of cigarettes. And a stim pack, box of detergent, a wrench. Well, I guess a wrench might come in handy. Tool cabinet it has a bobby pin in it. They look prepared for the end times. Don't let me keep you. All right, let's see. This door opens up into another office. Empty file cabinets. Empty desk with a lunch box. Terminal that's not working, some file cabinets, carton of cigarettes, we'll grab those. Desk has pre-war money and wonder glue, we'll take all. Terminal isn't working. This desk has 12 10 millimeter rounds, 5 20 gauge rounds. Over here, empty sunset sarsaparilla on an empty desk. This desk has jet, someone was working late, I suppose. All right, 
empty sunset sarsaparilla file cabinet has a pack of cigarettes we'll grab those of course, and, of course. all right keep you. i don't know who they're talking to back there but i guess we can kind of mosey on over that way oh hi you remember us right i'm jenny millet wow there's a lot of you fellers I'm not here to pick your pocket, but I am here to investigate this room and grab this second floor security key. All right. Here's a terminal locked hard. We do have one programmer's digest, but I don't know that it's worth it at the moment. There's a star bottle cap. Empty sunset sarsaparilla. I think we only have one programmer's digest left. We should probably hang on to that. How are we doing as far as the whole experience things? We're getting close ish. Hello, Mrs. Millet. Hi. I hope you have an excellent day at work today. You too, mobile facial recognition scanner? Alright, let's mosey this way. They don't seem to mind once they've checked us out. Which is good. File cabinets, pack of cigarettes. Plus we have a security key now. That was that was strange. Could have sworn. Looked like someone was sitting over here. Oh well, that's what must have been that poor soul right there. Three twenty gauge rounds, thirteen nine millimeter rounds. Let's see here, empty file cabinets, desk has three bottle caps, an empty Nuka-Cola bottle, we'll leave that. These file cabinets have a clipboard, not much else. Of course, of course. Cooking pot. Empty locker, another lunch box. Refrigerator has a couple of atomic cocktails. Vodka, whiskey, scotch. We'll take those just to sell. And then we'll kind of zip on out this way. I think I'm a little turned around. Main floor office is locked hard. Locked average, locked average. Well, let's see if we can do this quick. There we go. Oh, first aid kit. It has a doctor's bag. We need those since we met those assassins. Empty syringe, a stem pack. Ammunition box has two energy cells and four microfusion cells. 64570 government, 74 electron charge pack. And... Two 12 gauge rounds plus three missiles, not too shabby. Toolbox here has scrap electronics and a wrench, we'll grab that. Another doctor's bag. This was a right fine room. A stim pack, some conductors, more fission batteries up there. Alright, I can't seem to stealth. Eddie, are you doing the thing again? Alright, Eddie's like, no, I'm out here. Hi! I would prefer not to break this door open while you're standing there watching Hello, me. Hello, Mrs. Millis. I hope you have an excellent day at work today. You too, you floating ball. Why don't you go somewhere else so I can crack this door open? That's a good robot. Oh, there's another one coming. Let's just do it and be done. And in we go. Empty file cabinet. Scorched books. Two atomic cocktails, vodka and whiskey, and uh, bubble gum. Desk is empty. Terminal is locked, but easy. All right, sealant. Sending. Let's try sending. Four of seven. So it could be stating. No, it really couldn't. In that case, it might be feeling. There we go. 
encrypted message from lots of symbols to lots of symbols. I've managed to get the password to Isley's computer. I'll forward it to you with the release notes to the Q35. The prototype is going to be stopping here on its way to the Department of Defense. You should be able to intercept it on the road. Q35 release notes. Quantum, whoops, I kind of went and messed that up. Q35 release notes. Quantum plasma modulation matter injection rifle version 32 status failure. While version 32 didn't have the power yield of the version 31 or 30, we managed to increase the stabilization threshold by approximately 27.35%. This is promising, however, we still have yet to come up with the solution for the matter inversion issues. Version 33 status failure. Notes lab destroyed, data lost. Version 34 status failure. Notes. Interesting. I'm not sure where we got this data from. It is a completely different direction from what we've been working on. We managed to cycle the matter inversion using a polarized quantum spin. I think that we solved the issue with the compensation field. I have high hopes for the next weapon. Version 35. Status. Success. Notes. That data we received from Xuan did the trick. We managed to get a stable build model. I don't think this weapon is ready for mass production yet, but it should show that we have a working prototype. We should be able to get these issues resolved in a later build. As you requested, here are the improvements when compared to a standard plasma rifle. Prototype material is not suitable for extended field use. On average, the Q35 has a higher refire rate, but the time between shots is more consistent increase in active bolt charge time accurate at longer ranges. Plasma charge has a 30% increase in energy. Alright then, and we have some correspondence from Julia Masters, CFO, or sorry, to Julia Masters, from Leonard Steeple, Vice President. Julia, I am sure of you, you've heard by now about Robco's intentions to buy our company. In the past, you and I have been of like mind when it comes to the moral and financial future of this company. When Poseidon showed interest those years ago, you helped me rally the board in order to keep Repcon autonomous. I'd like your help again with Robco. Pierce claims that Robco is buying shares in the company to force a hostile takeover if we won't sell willingly. I don't believe that they will be able to pull together enough shares without some approval of the board. I think that you and I will be able to sway enough votes to keep the company safe. I hope you will stand with me for this. Leonard. And next we have to Leonard Steeple from Julia Masters. I'd stand with you, Leo. Give me a few days to try and gather some support from my allies on the board. I've run the numbers and I'm pretty sure you are right. We can fight this. Jules. And finally... To Piers Isley, General Manager from Julia Masters, CFO. You were right. Leo sent me a message last night. I've made the call to the board, and I think with the numbers we are looking at pocketing from the Robco deal, we will have no trouble getting the board to vote no confidence on him. Jules. Just a little bit of backstabbing. All right. Well, I think we have gone quite a while, so... We will pause here in Joel's office and pick up again next time. For the moment, though, I will turn it over to the other checkers. All right, here we are, learning about the corporate backstabbing of Robco and Repcon and, well, at the moment, being Jenny. Anyway, I would like to thank you for watching. I hope you found the video entertaining and maybe even just a little informative. I would like to thank you if you're a subscriber and ask you to please, above all, take care.